Well, it's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we're looking at a first major conversation. Today is World Mental Health Day, and it's a day that's been mapped out. It's an annual event every year. October the 10th is meant to create awareness about mental health around the world and mobilize efforts to support those experiencing mental health issues. And so, um, being an annual event since 2013, the theme for the World Mental Health 2022 is that make mental health for all global priority or for all a global priority. Uh, the question is, is mental health a priority in Nigeria? Is mental health, which is an integral part of health and well-being, neglected in this part of the world? Joining us to answer this question is uh, Bara. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, so, so quickly, there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, mental health, and uh, every other time, some people would make statement about, "Hey, uh, this is my mental health issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a mental health concern. Uh, what exactly is mental health?" Okay, so mental health is a person's emotional, psychological, and social well-being. So, when a person is able to function adequately in the different aspects of their life. So, so, so how do we know that the person is functioning, you know, adequately? So when a person is able to be productive, a person is able to socialize properly, a person is able to manage their stressors adequately, you know, and not necessarily just, you know, snap based on, like, emotions and, yeah. Yeah. So one can say that, that you know, this person is mentally fit or healthy. Yes. Yeah. Now, but, but um, you know, still looking at the conversation now, but some persons, according to the WHO, uh, that's the World Health Organization, uh, there's been a lot of reports saying that one in six working age adults are estimated to have a mental disorder, mm -hmm. and globally 12 million uh, working days are lost every year, and on the, on the count of depression. Mm -hmm. Would you like to share your thoughts on this statistics or, you know, this revelation from the WHO? Yes, yeah, so um, depression is one of the most common uh, mental health disorders around the world, um, and in Nigeria as well. A lot of people have depression, but then, you know, because depression is not something that you can see just from a person's face, um, a person can be going through depression and then, you know, they're able to function, but then, you know, on the inside, they are suffering. Um, depression um, can exhibit in so many different ways. So, yes, we are, a lot of people are suffering from depression and anxiety because depression and anxiety go hand in hand. And it's the most common mental health um, disorder. Mm, so, so, do you care to explain, you know, depression, and the anxiety and how that actually functions. Okay, so depression is loss of interest, depression is loss of motivation, depression is, um, you know, constant worry of the future, but not being able to have the energy to take act or like work on your problem areas. You know, and how anxiety comes into that is when a person is worried about their future, but then they're not able to work on it, they'll still they'll, they'll get more anxious because you can't do anything because you're depressed about it. And a lot of people are going through this, but they don't necessarily know, you know that they're going through this. You just find yourself, you're no longer interested, you find yourself withdrawn, you, know, you, don't, you no longer want to go out to events or you know, socialize with family members or see your friends anymore. And you know, sometimes there can be a source as to maybe somebody's having financial struggles and then you just see them slowly deteriorating, they're not hanging out with people, you can't take action to do, you know, your daily task, or like it's slower for you, you don't have any motivation and all of that, so that's what depression can be. So every other time we talk about, you know, mental health and mental health disorder, yeah. there's always, you know, the focus on depression. Mm -hmm. Is depression the only, you know, mental health disorder that we no, have? There, there's, there's a lot of mental health um, problems. Um, like I said, anxiety also, there are different types of anxiety. Somebody might have um, post-traumatic stress disorder. That's an anxiety type of anxiety. There's ADHD. There's attention um, deficit hyperactive disorder, you know, so when a person is too restless and they're always 
you know, hyper, they have inattention. So there, there, there's also schizophrenia. Um, so there are different kinds of mental health disorders. I think in Nigeria, there's, there might be like an ignorance to, you know, the types of disorders and, you know, how it affects people everywhere in the world, not just, you know, abroad. It affects people in Nigeria also. So, yes. There are different types of mental health disorders. So I, I like us to pay attention to the uh, the theme for 2022 mental world health concern and what mm -hmm. have you. And he says that uh, make mental health for all a global priority. Mm -hmm. So it brings us to the crux of the conversation mm -hmm. of whether Nigeria as a country is paying attention, you know, to uh, mental health. Do you think that we're paying attention to mental health issues? I think, I think there has been some form of improvement over the years, but then I think there's a lot of ignorance still. Um, you know, at the workplace, your, your colleague might be struggling, but you might not necessarily know. Um, so, like, there's so many different things that affect a person's mental health, you know, work stress, traffic, and all of that in Nigeria, for, for one. Um, but then I don't think that we are there yet in terms of are we paying enough attention to people's mental health. You know, even children get affected by, you know, mental health as well. So I don't think we are there yet, but then there's been significant improvement over the years. Okay, so so because on this particular day, I think it's very significant mm -hmm. and I'm sure that you want to agree with me that it's important for us to talk about, you know, how we can savage the situation, what we can do to improve uh, what we haven't been doing. Uh, I'd like you to talk about what we haven't been doing as a country, as as individuals, mm -hmm. you know, in different sphere. Uh, okay, as a country, I think um, it's a situation where the government will probably need to invest more into the healthcare center so that people can have accessible, you know, mental health treatment. As individuals, it's about you taking care of yourself, being aware of like, you know, yourself, self-awareness, being able to regulate, being able to speak to a professional if you need to. I think everybody needs to speak to a professional at some point, you know, you never know you know, what you, you're going through until you speak to somebody. Also looking after yourself, going for exercises, you know, trying to socialize with family members, because those can be ways of like coping, you know, when you're dealing with a stressor in your life. So, yeah, but, but, so I, so, I mean, as, as, as brilliant as that sounds, mm -hmm. but I, I, I don't think that that's very realistic. Really? Yes, because you, right. you, if, if you live in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and if you live in this culture, you want to agree with me that um, that's really not the case for a lot of persons. You know, we okay. live in a culture where we're very, uh, the world will be, you know, we're very conserved mm -hmm. as a conserved society. And over time, so you have the issue of personality playing a major role where people would want to, you know, preserve themselves and not, you know, just be out there with whatever you have. So uh, the culture of silence have constantly dominated, uh, you know, this particular system. I, I really don't know about other cultures, but I'll speak for the culture mm -hmm. where I'm in. Yeah. And so people don't like to talk mm -hmm. for several reasons. Others will not want to feel like, hey, you know, I'm vulnerable <laughs> or putting out my problem there because... Mm -hmm. We're talking about all of the stress and all the persons don't want to talk about it because they feel like they probably might just be nagging and mm -hmm. they might just be whining and sounding very weak. And so culture of silence is a very big issue yeah. if we talk about mental health because you have said it's okay to speak to uh, professionals. How many professionals do we have? Do we even have a culture where we can actually say, hey, I have to go visit uh, a psychologist or mm -hmm. you know, go visit someone and talk about whatever it is? So... How do we get through all of this? I think you'd be surprised the amount of people that are seeing therapists nowadays. Um, I understand that in Nigeria, there's, we have, like you said, we are very conservative. Um, however, I think um, seeing a therapist is in this confidentiality. You know, your therapist wouldn't share what you shared with um, him or her to anybody else except they have your permission. And then also, I'm not asking people to share with just anybody. You have people that are safe people because it's not everybody that can handle, you know, when you are talking to, talking about something traumatic or something difficult, you know, you're being vulnerable. So having safe people is very important, you know. 
Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the answer to that. All right, so, so moving forward now, uh, I'd like us to also talk about what we can do uh, on a larger scale. Okay. Yes, I know that you've talked about having, you know, the hospitals, but uh, and also having centers where people can actually visit. But looking at the cost of it, I know a lot of people would say that having to visit a psychologist is not cheap. Mm -hmm. So for those that you have, we're not also talking about the stigma, mm -hmm. because for every time we talk about mental health, there's also a stigmatization mm -hmm. around it. And mm -hmm. people will think that maybe when you're on the streets and, you know, you're very careless, you're not able to coordinate. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, but people think that if I say that I'm going to be visiting a psychologist, mm -hmm. someone might think that I'm crazy, that I'm mad. We don't use that word. No, the, yeah. the, but this, 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 this are the yeah. languages. This are the, 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 the perception. Have, right. So how do we fight against this perception that's hindering, you know, uh, people going out to seek for help? I think so, creating more awareness and then making people aware that it's not just people that have difficult issues that need to see a therapist. Um, and then also being aware that you can't control what people think about you. So, you know, worrying about what somebody else is going to say because you're going to see a therapist. The benefit is in your own, you know, life, not to the other person's life. So if you're able to a therapist for your own benefit, then why not do that, regardless of what people are going to say or the stigmatization. But then I think so the stigmatization, it's, it's a difficult one to shake because there's always going to be that, you know, perception that oh, there's something really wrong with this person. But then there's, there's always a solution for things. So even if you're going through the toughest times, there's always going to be a solution, you know. So, um, Let's, let's talk about what individuals can actually do on this particular day now, you know, to help themselves. Yeah. I think so what people can do is you can research. Research, you know, the internet is very vast. But not everyone has access to the internet. As much as this sounds mm -hmm. very good and okay, if you, if you look at, you know, the country, mm -hmm. we understand that society is divided towards the haves and the haves not. Right. And so you can't expect everyone to be at the same you know, position. There are a lot of persons well, that's, right that's, now as we speak yeah. who don't have access, you know, to us and who, who cannot afford to have or enjoy this conversation and gain the knowledge and all that's been put out here this morning. Yeah. And so that's also a big issue. Mm -hmm. So how do we reach out, you know, to this category of persons? I think so as organizations or um, mental health facilities, creating more awareness, going out to talk to people, um, going to orphanage homes, going to places where people don't necessarily have help and then, you know, providing maybe a discounted, you know, treatment for them is beneficial. So they have the awareness and then they can seek if they need help. But then on the other side, if you have access to these things, doing your own research, I think just even searching for mental health facilities in Lagos now, you have like a different range, different range of... Um, facilities that you can go to. Um, there's so many um, sites that point you to different therapists as well. So I think there are options. It's just, you know, if you, if, if you look right, you find, you find what you're looking for. So what are the causes, Dan? If, if we talk about, you know, mental health and uh, the fact that some people are not stable, mm -hmm. you have different issues, yeah. what would you say is the cause of mental health issues? is the cost of mental health issues. I think childhood trauma, tra things that happen in your childhood, because there are lots of things that happen in your childhood. What, what kind of childhood trauma? Um, so it could be anything. It could be from people not, your parents not giving you enough attention. It could be from seeing your parents fight every day. It could be from teachers mistreating you in school. It could be from bullying. So there are different um, causes of mental health disorders or issues. Mm. Yeah. So, so how do we prevent it? Um, I think, like I said, creating awareness. I think people being more mindful of how they treat other people and how their behavior is affecting the next person. And then parents also being aware that, you know, you're raising people and then they are seeing what you're doing also is important. So people being more self-aware, being able to manage their emotions, being able to self-regulate, you know, by themselves. So you're able to understand, okay, I'm making a mistake or... I'm doing this and it might affect the next person in, in, 
in a negative way. Mm. Yeah. But but you know you 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 cited an example of a, a family setting, mm -hmm. a family scenario where you know children could actually have at the end of the day, once upon a time we're all uh, children. You were a child. I was yeah. a child. Yeah. And we're still children, even though we're an adult now. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the question is, at what point, you know, do people understand that experiences and actions could actually lead to uh, this kind of negative effect on, on the people around them, especially as children, and this would have uh, a long-time impact? So at that point, there's a foundational issue. You mm -hmm. say that it could be caused from uh, trauma. Mm -hmm. It could be as a child. It could also be as an adult. Mm -hmm. So... How do we, all of us, manage it? As a child, as a parent, as a guardian, what do we need to do? I think so self-awareness is very important. Um, and then, you know, so forgiveness also plays a role in all of this because, you know, to be able to deal with some of, <clears throat> sorry, some of the traumas that you're going through, you have to learn to forgive. Um, I think as parents, it's, like I said, it's very important for you to be aware of yourself and how you know, you're causing an impact on your child or whoever is around you. Because as infants, from, from infant children's personalities are developing, your temperaments are developing. So if a child is around a, um, a parent that is not necessarily giving them attention, the child might feel like they have, you know, they have a problem because their parents don't necessarily want to be around them. So... So from early, so parents just need to be more aware, of, like individuals need to be more aware and deal with their own traumas before you start families, before you get into relationships, because when you are not in a good place mentally, you can ha it can affect your relationship with everybody. It could be your husband, it could be your children. So as an individual, you need to pay attention to yourself. Look after yourself. Look after what you're thinking about. Am I thinking negatively all the time? Do I have a positive outlook or... Am I thinking negatively? And if you're thinking negatively, that affects your behavior and your attitude eventually. So just being aware of yourself, your emotions. And your but, 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 but so, so let, let's, let's bring it back to our current reality. I mean, we're talking about Nigeria. Yeah. If you look at it, almost every other time that you turn on, mm -hmm. the social media is there. You turn to the left. There's a report of, you know, a young man who has brutalized his wife mm -hmm. or a young man who's, you know, mothered her son or daughter or woman was actually done something very nasty and not morally right. Yeah. Even with the law, it doesn't sit well. You hear of, you know, the inflation rates, mm -hmm. uh, you look at the current reality. Th there's so much that's going on. And yeah. so how do people manage their mental health in the midst of negativity and all of the happenings that will be going on? I think so. There's always going to be stressors. Um, I think I what I encourage people to do is focus on what you can control. You can't control other people. You can't control the market. No, but that sounds that sounds that sounds like it's you very know. simplistic. But the truth is that a lot of our solutions are very simple. But people don't necessarily think that that would be the solution because you know sometimes the problem is so big. But then you are saying the solution is so small. But then the truth is that you can't control other people. You can only control what you're thinking about. So if I'm letting the stressors of life affect me, how I see myself and how I see the world in general is going to be negative. You know, if I'm looking at it negatively. So you need to be very aware of like what you're thinking. It's very important because if, like I said, if you're thinking negatively, it affects how you're thinking about things. It affects your attitude and then your behavior. Then you find yourself snapping and shouting on the road. But then if you don't let things, you know, get to you, if you have a positive outlook on life, it's about choice. It's about you choosing, really. So being aware and then choosing now, okay, regardless of, you know, what's happening around me, I choose to be happy or I choose to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. Yeah. So, so and, that, and that goes, you know, a long way to very critical, critical situation because it sounds very pretty when you say it, as you're saying it. Yeah. But let's even look at someone who's not, we're looking at very critical situation, how... Uh, does a, a man or a woman who, uh, I mean, we're talking about family setting now, they're not able to provide the next, they're not sure where the, you know, the meal will be coming from, yeah. a loss of job and all of that, and then they have a family to cater for. How can they still maintain 
a positive halo? How did they even come to this point where they understand that, hey, we're supposed to be, you know, self-aware, we're supposed to understand that um, it's, it's our choice. Mm -hmm. You know, someone is hungry. I, I mean, think so. It's a lot. It, can, it could just be a lot. Um, if you do not grow up knowing that, it would be difficult to adapt to that as an adult. But you need to learn. So the thing is to learn how to problem solve also so that, you know, you're not... Because of the stressors, you don't say, okay, life is bad. I'm going to sit down and not do anything. You have to keep moving. That's the thing about life. You don't give up. You're allowed to feel sad and angry about the world because, you know, it can be ugly sometimes, but then you have to pick yourself up constantly. And that's where the choice comes, you know, I choose to be happy and I choose to keep, you know, making the effort and trying and trying. You know, when you, when I think, so when a person stops and gives up, that's when, you know, the depression can really kick in or whatever it means. So the last one, because um, and we've been told to wrap up now. Okay. Uh, some people say that mental health disorder issues have led to suicide, yeah. which is like the peak of it. Mm -hmm. Do you think that that's the case? I think so. When a person is um, suicidal, their brain is not necessarily functioning in, in the right way because they have either, you know, they've tried so many things and it might not have worked, but then, um, yes, it's possible to come into suicide as a result of like depression. Well, thank you so much, Bara. We, were, we have to go at this point in time. We we'll appreciate your presence with us this morning. Thank you very much. As uh, we have been looking at the issue of mental health, it's World Mental Health Day, and we have been talking about the fact that as a country have we paid attention to the issue of you know mental health as a country as a government as individuals and what can we do on this particular day uh, thank you once again Barriwa. she is uh, a clinical psychologist olive prime psychological services thank you for being with us we'll take a break now when we return we'll be looking at all theft and pipeline vandalism stay with us <laughs>